final head-to-head -head press conference for Saturday's event that will take place at Wembley, which will feature uh, some of the best fighters in the world of boxing and will be headlined by the WBO Light Heavyweight Championship in the world between Nathan Cleverley, the undefeated champion, against Robin Krasnicki of Munich, Germany, who uh, has a record of 39-2, and he's his mandatory challenger. Also on the bill, we've got the WBO European Lightweight Championship, Liam Walsh versus Scott Harrison, uh, former two-time world champion Scott, uh, on the comeback trout against uh, one of the hottest young fighters in the country. Then we've got the Super Flyweight Championship at the Commonwealth, featuring Yaqub Karim, who is the champion from Lagos in Nigeria, who is uh, fighting against the undefeated Paul Butler, and British champion, who's from Ellesmere Paul, uh, up in the northern part of this country. We've also got on the uh, card a 10 minute, three, a 10 three minute round con international heavyweight contest featuring uh, the former British and Commonwealth champion Derek Chisora against Hector Alfredo Avilia. And we have a, an undercard which features another 10 fights. There are 10, sorry, 14 fights on this card. Um, and I'd like to uh, welcome and thank uh, all the live Boxing Nation, Box Nation stream uh, viewers who are on the website, welcome to today's press conference and to the members of the press and all those who are watching the stream on boxnation.tv.com. Um, our sponsors, or part of our sponsors, Betfred, uh, we'd like to thank them for, the, uh, for sponsoring the event. Betfred have provided all the members of the press with a free £10 bet on Saturday's show, details of which you'll find in your press pack. And we'd also like to thank our main sponsor, Random Steel, the official partner of Box Nation, as well as Nuts Magazine and Events and Ticket Agency. Um, just before we get on to this press conference, in the next couple of weeks we've got a fabulous lineup on Box Nation, some of the best fights from around the world. Obviously, Saturday's show, which uh, will then be followed by later, or the early hours of the morning, the uh, Alvarez and Trout fight from the United States. Then we've got Amir Khan next week. Uh, having his first fight for two years in the UK against Diaz and then from Argentina in the early hours of the morning we've got Martinez against Britain's Mark Martin Murray and then the following week the Big E, uh, the most, uh, I think he's the number one earning athlete in, on the Forbes um, rich list last year and that's uh, Floyd Mayweather. So it's a good lineup in the next few weeks and it's all live and exclusive on Box Nation. So if you want to subscribe, subscribe early. Uh, otherwise you'll miss out. Anyway, getting back to today, we've got here, all the guys are on the bill, and I'm going to introduce everybody from the left. Uh, we've got in the front, front row, Dirk Dzemski, who's the trainer of uh, Robin. Uh, then we've got Scott Harrison's father, um, Peter, who is uh, here. Then next to him is Scott, former world champ, two world champion. Vince Cleverly, uh, who trains his son, who's sitting to my right, and champion, uh, Nathan. Then we've got Don Charles, who's the trainer of, uh, of Derek. Then we've got Graham Everett, the trainer of um, Liam Walsh. And then we've got Anthony Farnell, who trains and looks after Paul Butler. On the table here, we've got to my left, Ulf Steinforth, promoter of Robin Krasnicki. Next to him, Christoph Howerkamp, who's an interpreter. Then we've got Robin, mandatory challenger himself. Nathan to my right, Derek Chisora. Then we have Paul Butler, the British champion, and Liam Walsh, the Commonwealth champion. So these are all the guys that are all here. We've got a fabulous show lined up at Wembley. Tickets have gone really well. It's going to be an exciting night. Boxing commences at four o'clock in the afternoon to accommodate the 14 fights. So it's a real long, if you like boxing, it's the place to be. It's a boxing festival. You're going to see some great fights on there involving, as I say, some of the best fighters in this country. All the guys are here. If you've got questions to ask, please feel free to do so. Thank you. Sergeant, if you could use the microphones, please, as well. Just raise your hands if you want to ask a question. Hi, Mike Woods from Epic Sports. Thanks for uh, letting us come. Frank and all the fighters wishing you a good fight. First question is for Nathan. Nathan, what sort of fight are we going to see on Saturday? How are you going to handle Robin Krasnicki? Um, I believe on, on Saturday night this, this is going to be a good fight. Uh, myself, uh, undefeated fighter, uh, who comes to fight, I love to fight, and, and Robin Krasnicki, who's, who's quite an assertive fighter uh, on the front foot, who, who likes to fight. 
So I believe this is going to be a real good, good fight. Two two fighters who, who re, you know, don't like to take a back foot. So I'm prepared for that. Um, I'm ready for war, you know, and this is going to be a good fight. Just to let you know, Epics, Epics are broadcasting the fight live back in the United States. We're very grateful that they're involved with us in the broadcasting the fight. Are there any other questions? Yeah, this is Jamil McLaren with Epic Sports. Uh, my question is for Robin Krasnicki. How do you feel coming off uh, being the challenger with the 37 fight, 38 fight winning streak? Uh, do you feel like the underdog that uh, they all have you as? Do, does he feel like the underdog that, that they have him listed as? <coughs> Fühlst du dich trotzdem als Underdog, als ja, derjenige, der aus der Außenseite kommt? Also erstmal hallo zusammen. Just first hello to everybody. Ich bin hier gekommen, um zu kämpfen und keinen Urlaub zu machen. Und ich weiß, das ist nicht mein Zuhause, aber ich bin hier gekommen, um zu gewinnen. He is not coming here to London to do something like holidays. He is coming uh, here to London to win this title. Yes. Ich will, dass London eigentlich eine Erinnerung in mein Leben bleibt und dass ich dann London wieder besuche, dass ich hier mal Urlaub machen kann. First, you will say, um, see in the future that London will be a big step in his career and may he come back in a kind of holiday and always will London be a big, big, huge moment in his life. And when I come back here, I would say on the 20th of February, I won here my war. It was a war, but I won it. And when he comes back, he will say the 20th of April will be his day and he has won this war, this uh, kind of battle. I have respect, of course, for my opponent. He is strong, he is the world master. Aber jetzt ist es Zeit gekommen, dass ich Weltmeister werde. Ich habe hart trainiert, ich bin topfit wie noch nie und ich werde mein Bestes geben. Also ich will nach Deutschland als Sieger fahren, fliegen. Uh, he has a lot of respect for Nathan and he is the world champion. On one hand, on the other hand, he will fulfill his dream. He want to be here or he's coming here to get this title and he will fly back to Germany with the belt. At the title. The belt title. <coughs> Ja, eigentlich habe ich vieles zu sagen, aber ich muss ja nicht viel erzählen und viel sagen. Ich bin froh, dass ich da bin und das Rest werde ich eigentlich am Samstag in meiner Sprache zeigen. Uh, he has a lot of things to tell and to explain and there's a little history in this fight, a long history for example. But he in his own language will show um, uh, yeah, what he has to say in the ring on Saturday. Ich war oft eigentlich so unterstützt von denen, die haben mich als, also nicht so als Gegner genommen, aber im Endeffekt sind dreimal auf dem Weg weggelaufen. Um, he feels all time, especially for the three times postponement, as a little bit, not a little bit, as an, as the, an underestimate uh, opponent. And um, yeah, it looks like that they flew, they, they always, yeah, don't want this fight. Aber ich freue mich sehr, dass ich hier bin und endlich, dass diese Zeit gekommen, wo er vor mir steht. I'm happy to be here and it's really, really pleasure that this fight is now in front and nobody can escape. I, I would just like to say, we wanted this fight, and that's why we won the purse bid. That's why we're here. I'm Gareth A. Davis from The Telegraph. Nathan, uh, um, can you put in perspective, just here at the back, here on the, on the right, um, can you put in perspective, uh, given that uh, Robin is your mandatory challenger, um, the, the, the importance of this fight at this stage in your career, and obviously uh, given what Frank's talked about, about the possibilities for you after this, later on in the year? This, this, this fight is, is massive because as, as a world champion, uh, you, you've got to fight these mandatory challengers, um, these fighters who are hungry, and they come in to rip this world title from me. Um, 
So it's important that I don't look too far ahead. You know, we've we've had massive talk of the unification fight, but we've got to deal with with this guy, and um, he's a good fighter, and I've prepared for that. So when I when I prepared mentally, 100% and physically ready, there's no way can this guy beat me. You know, I'll make sure of that. And on, on Saturday night, I'm gonna perform. I'm gonna take this guy out, and we're gonna move on to, to bigger and better things. We know how hard you work in the gym. That, that that's obvious. Um, but given this guy has come to steal the belt from you, if you like, in in, in your own country, have you had an extra um, an extra special camp because you know that he is serious about this fight? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's, I added spice to this fight because I know this guy is confident, he's hungry, and he'll do anything to, to take this belt. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, and I've, I've mentally prepared myself for that. That, you know, something I've worked long and hard for all my life, and, and this guy wants to take it from me. So it's something I can't allow to happen. And to do that requires good preparation, good solid preparation, and I've done that. And like I said, when, I, when I've done that, there's no way can this guy beat me, no way. Uh, question for Derek. Derek, hi. Um, if you get through Saturday night okay, presuming you do, how far do you think you'll be away, away from another shot of the world title? Oh, I'm proud. This year, you know, he's got to win the fight. He's been out now for what, nine months since the last fight, so you know he needs to get a couple of wins under his belt. Um, if Derek comes through, he'll fight again in uh, in June or July, and we want to keep him active. I've got to tell you something. You look at him; it's the fittest I've seen him. You know, he looks he looks in such good condition. He's it's not like uh, he's not carrying fat or anything. He's trained really, really hard, and I think you're going to see something special from Derek on Saturday. Hopefully, get that one out of the way. And he's in the mix. You know, he's, he's fought better quality opponents than uh, Tyson Fury or David Price. When you consider, you know, uh, how highly they or how highly they were being touted, or one of them being touted. And you look at Derek. Derek's been in there, and he's, and he's not even had 20 fights yet. Yeah. Derek Chisora has had 19 fights, and you look at the fights he's been involved with in that short space of time. I can't think of another fighter in this country who's ever done that. Bruce Beck, uh, Bruce Beck, Epic Sports, and WNBC TV back in New York. Derek, 280 days outside the ring here. So, what's your approach here, physically and mentally? How do you feel, and how much are you ready to go just to get back in the ring? Yeah, I'm excited about fighting and fighting back again under the, the British border control. Uh, you know, back at Wembley. Uh, you know. Uh, I lost my first fight at Wembley, I won my first fight at Wembley as well, so uh, this will be a great comeback for me to fight again in Wembley, so uh, I'm, ex I'm so excited, me and Don, we've been working out on so many things, you know, um, I've been tr we've been training almost for about since last year, December, so this is interesting for me as well, so can't wait. <coughs> Scott, Steve Lillis, um, is there less pressure on you fighting away from home in London? Because in Scotland, everything you seem to do is on the front page there. Yeah, well, tell me about it, it's an absolute nightmare. Uh, well, it's good to be fighting at London again. I've been boxing for about 10 years. So it's good to be back again. Uh, but fighting away from Glasgow, obviously I'd rather fight Glasgow. But no one would be under the line late so much as uh, to buy a bonus for me. And do you accept this to be your last assault at a world title challenge? No, I don't see it like that, no. I just see uh, the start of a new chapter in my career. No, I've been in the game for, for years, same professional day team. But I was, I've been suspended, I was out of the ring for about seven years. So, I'm feeling good now. I've trained hard, sparring's been well, I've no problems, weight's fine. I can't wait to get the. Uh, Get a job done Saturday. And Liam, see your left. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to stay lightweight if you win this fight or go back to Super Feather? Um, I'm not sure yet, Steve. Um, I'll discuss with Frank after this fight and we'll go from there, I think. Yeah. 
It's an intriguing <coughs> fight, if you think about this. You know, Liam, as we say, he's a new kid on the block. He's, I mean, I thought he looked fabulous in his last fight at West Ham. It's a shame with the uh, injuries, and who knows, he may have been sitting here now as a world champion had he not had the car, car crash in December. And I thought, geez, fight against Ricky Burns was called off. But then you look at Scott, who I think, in my opinion, is one of the best world champions I've seen in the UK for a good 15, 20 years. Never lost his title in the ring. Won, won two titles, two different weights. Probably one of the toughest sods you've ever seen in the ring. And, uh, you know, and I'm sure you don't want to hear it, but you know, it's just a shame the way it's all gone. But now here's a chance for it. And uh, it's an intriguing fight. It's a really intriguing fight. We're going to see. I think we're going to see something a bit, a bit special on the night between the two of them. For, for Derek, can you give us a prediction for the fight so we can put our ten pound bet thread on that? Over here, Derek. Prediction. It's going to me. Yeah. Del boy. Who did you predict the fight? Yeah, your prediction on the fight for us to put a bet on that bet thread later know. on. I don't know, I don't gamble. What you do? I'm a gambler. <laughs> I'm a gambler. Okay, yeah, but what do you think? What your, what's your prediction? On what fight? fight? On my on fight? Your fight? Uh, great fight. Yeah. And, and love it. <laughs> what about you, Nathan? What's the fight? Um, what's the fight? Uh, that was good. K K 22 to 1 was good in the first uh, round. KO victory, Nathan Cleverly. You've made a prediction. I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave you guess around. Are you going to make a prediction? Um, bet, you can have this bet on Bet Fred. He's saying KO. KO. So, but first we need some, or well, Robin want to say a last thing to Nathan. And so, before his prediction, also before the uh, Vorhersage must be the Kampf ausgeht, it's good to have a good time. If we so want to listen, we. That's not going to happen. The betting uh, we're doing after. It's not now. Wann du sozusagen ihn um die Welt? Achso. Wann du mal also ich kann es nicht planen, wie der Kampf ausgeht. Ich habe hoch, hoch trainiert, also ich habe mein Bestes gegeben. Aber ich möchte noch da was sagen und noch euch was zeigen. Ja, um, yeah, first of all, he will, he's not, for him, he trained hard, so for him, his prediction is not so easy, but he's uh, very confident to win. But he has to say something. Also, Dieser Kampf ist jetzt zum viertes Mal, also dreimal abgesagt. This fight was postponed for three times. Ich habe mich viermal richtig hart vorbereitet, wo ich wirklich, also es war so hart, wo ich auch oft schwarz von meinen Augen gesehen habe. Uh, he prepared himself for four times and it was a, each time was a hard time, something like times black for the in, in the eye, so he did hard, hard preparation. Und Und dafür mache ich mir keine Sorgen, also ich muss meine Wetten da nicht euch jetzt sagen, ich wollte euch jetzt was vorstellen und was zeigen. You don't need to bet on this fight, because he knows how he will win this fight. But he wants to show something, because we had a little research. The research made in articles and news how and why the fights are postponed. And it was always like stomach age, stomach back. Stomach illness, on. stomach upset, it's on on stomach Saturday. anger. It doesn't matter, it's history. So We're fighting it's history, yeah, yeah, but just, right, just a little bit. We're going to be on, don't worry about it. And he got a little present. Bring that to the ring on Saturday. Yes. We'll have a great fight between you. Frank, let's, let's, let's talk to Nathan. He's Good. talking to Nathan, so wait. And I have a gift for Cleverly from Germany. And I would like to give him a gift for you. He has a little present for Nathan. Yeah, brought it back from Germany, so. Sure. Sure. Don't let him punk you, Nathan. Also, this is a mini rock, weil nach drei Absagen, this is wirklich eine, eine, also billige Ausrede und dafür muss ich ihm das alles so vorgeben. Like so, it's a skirt. And so he showed Nathan like, for the Princess of Boxing, Nathan Cleverly. Princess of Boxing. I'm, I might wear that on the fight on Saturday night, and when I KO him, it's going to look bad on him, isn't it? The guy in the skirt has beat him.
Ja. Werden wir sehen. Also wir so sehen. Don't, you get, don't you get skirty here. <lacht> Hey, I'm qualified, he needs a skirt. Uh, Jameer McClellan again with Epic Sports for uh, Chris Nicky. Um, you have uh, this air of confidence, like you know something that we don't know. What is it that you know that we don't know? He knows what size skirt he takes. As it relates to the upcoming fight, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, sure. Also ich glaube an mich sehr, 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 also weil ich habe wirklich hart gearbeitet und nach meiner Arbeit kann ich auch an mich so, so sicher sein. He worked so hard, so he is believing in his skills and he will be very, very secure to win this far. He is secure, he is confident. Und ich bin, ich bin bereit für diese schwere Aufgabe auf jeden Fall. Dafür bin ich auch da. It's a, yeah, it's a big challenge for him on one hand, on the other hand, he is ready for that and he is prepared. Are there any more questions? Uh, it's, it's Jim Rosenthal, the back one for Don. Don, um, you work very, very closely with Derek throughout uh, your training career. Just give us an indication of the sort of shape and, and, and his mindset, really, going into this one. Um, it's more about mindset. His mindset is, um, Derek's got a very strong mind, very strong-minded, <coughs> and um, he's in a very good place at the moment, Derek, mentally and physically. And um, we've prepared well as usual, and it's, it's, a re, it's found that hunger, you know, that hunger. Something happens to you in your life sometimes, and you have to reach deep and find yourself, and I believe he's done that. So you're going to see a great fight on Saturday. No matter who the opponent would have been, we know who it is now, so you're still going to see a, a, great, a great fight. I have a question for Don also. Uh, what have you been working on specifically to, not just for this fight, but just in the advancement of Derek's career uh, as a fighter? Um, like Frank said earlier on, Derek has only had 19 professional fights. And also, he only had 21 amateur fights. <coughs> to date, he's only had 40 fights in total, professional and amateur. So. There's so many basic fundamentals that we're still working on. He didn't box as a kid. A lot of people start boxing when they're like 10, 11 years old. So certain things are implanted in you as a kid. He didn't box as a kid. He didn't take up boxing until he was 18 years old. So there's so many things, basic fundamentals we're still working on. So basically, it's, a going, it's an ongoing thing. Uh, working. It's a work in progress, basically. So, um, yeah. just. Is an up and coming uh, a fighter who's still learning. Any other questions? We all done? Don't forget, Rule Britannia, Saturday night, Wembley, 14 fights, kicks off at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, Get there early and you'll see some fireworks. Thanks very much for coming. Appreciate your help in making the promotion successful.